Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 3 to the x times 4 to the power x minus 1 over x equals 18 and we're going to be solving for x values. At this point feel free to guess but do not share your answers yet, okay? Does this equation have any solutions? Is there anything you can guess or does it have no solutions? Let's find out. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method I want to natural log both sides. You can use any base you want, doesn't matter, no big deal, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to use natural log uh, because it's so natural. Let's see how this works. We have the ln of a product which can be written as the sum of two lns. These are properties of logarithms. And then of course we can break down the 18 as well. We'll do that later. Let's go ahead and use power property here. Power property basically tells us that, hey, you can bring these down to the front like coefficients. This is going to become x ln 3. This is going to become x minus 1 over x times ln 4. I'm not re using the multiplication sign, but you can if you want. Equals ln 18. Let's not break it down yet. Now, I do see an x in the denominator. I don't like that. This is rational. Let's make it quadratic. Multiply both sides by x. And distribute you're going to get x squared ln 3 plus these two x's are going to cancel out x minus 1 times ln 4 and that's x times ln 18 great let's bring the ln 18 over here and distribute okay we're going to get x squared ln 3 plus x ln 4 minus 1 ln 4 minus x ln 18 equals 0 great now, this is going to turn into a quadratic because I can kind of write it as ln3 times x squared. And then these two can be put together. If you factor out the x, you're going to get x times ln14. I mean, not 14. Where does 14 come from? ln4 minus ln18. And notice that this is the difference of two logs. So it's going to turn into the log of a quotient, which is ln4 over 18. So we can kind of write it as 4 over 18 or simplify it and write it as two ninths and let's go ahead and put that in parentheses because that's a fraction and then of course multiply this by x right and then minus ln4 is going to be our constant equals zero now if you kind of pay attention to the x and x squared they this should look quadratic to you does it if not then i'm going to go ahead and change the colors a little bit here so hopefully at this point this looks quadratic to you right x squared plus bx plus c with a being the coefficient of x squared, b being the coefficient of x. Cool. Now let's go ahead and see how we can simplify this expression or solve it in it rather, right? How do we solve this problem? We can actually go ahead and use the quadratic formula, right? Uh, obviously, you wouldn't try to factor this, would you? I mean, you can try it, but it's going to be a little hard. But if you guessed one of the solutions at the very beginning, then obviously factoring would be a little easier. We can we can talk about that later when we do the second method. All right, great. So negative b, negative b. Oh, by the way, instead of writing the quadratic formula over and over, I want to evaluate the discriminant because you know what? That's going to be a little bit complicated. So let's get it out of the way first. b squared minus 4ac. And of course, double negative, unlike English, right? Will bring me a positive sign here. Now let's go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. ln2 over 9 is, again, we're going to break it down. ln2 minus ln9 squared plus 4 times ln3 times ln4. Now I want to simplify this, and this is good because if you didn't do this, then you would have to write it every time you write the quadratic formula. That would be kind of boring, right? Now, we can actually write this as ln3 squared, which turns into 2 ln3. And this can be written as ln2 squared, which turns into 2 ln2. Let's consider all those. And now I'm going to be squaring ln2 minus 2 ln3, which gives me the following. ln2 squared minus 2ab is just going to be 4 times ln2 times ln3. Plus b squared is just going to be 4 times ln Square. It's important to write everything in the simplest form because now you're going to see some simplifications. 2 times 4 is 8, so that's going to give us 8 times ln 3 times ln 2. Notice that these two terms are like terms. They have the same constants, whatever. I mean, like terms meaning that suppose these are variables, the lns, right? So we can combine them, and that's actually going to give us something nice. Negative 4 and positive 8 is going to give us a positive 4. It's totally going to change the 
sign here. And then, of course, the last term is going to disappear nicely. And remember, this came, this part came from a perfect square, right? And we got the same thing one more time with a plus sign, which means that this is actually a perfect square. ln2 plus 2 ln3 quantity squared. Make sense? I'm not using the parentheses because that will be too many parentheses. I don't like that. Hopefully ln2 is understood to be ln of 2. Make sense? Now, this is our discriminant. Let's go ahead and plug it into our formula. Remember, the quadratic formula can also be written like this, where delta is b squared minus 4ac. Of course, this is for ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Put it all together. You got the quadratic formula. All right? Real quick in 10 seconds. Now, let's go ahead and plug it in then. What is negative b? b is the coefficient of x, which is ln 2 ninths. So it's going to be negative ln 2 ninths. Don't worry, we're going to simplify that. And then we kind of did a little bit, but anyways. Plus minus the square root of delta. This is where this comes in handy. If you square root that with the plus minus sign, you're going to get something nice. Look at that. Beautiful, right? And divide that by 2a. The coefficient of x squared is ln3, so it's going to be 2 ln3. Now, this one is the oddball, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it into ln of 2 and ln of 3. Now, notice that this is ln2 minus ln9. If you negate it, though, it's going to turn into ln9 minus ln2, which is ln9 halves. In other words, this can be written as ln9 minus ln2. And let's go ahead and simplify this. This is ln3 squared, or 2 ln3, 2 ln3 minus ln2. So, but with a negative sign, right? Well, actually, never mind. I already negated it, so don't over negate. So that's going to be my first part. Let's go ahead and do this. This is going to replace that, the whole thing. And then uh, consider two separate solutions, 2 ln3 minus ln2. Let's use the plus sign first, plus ln2 plus 2 ln3 divided by 2 ln3, right? And then let's go ahead and cancel these out. This gives us 4 ln3 divided by 2 ln3. Uh-oh. ln3 cancels out, leaving us with 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, right? So x equals 2 is one of the solutions, and I'm pretty sure you guessed it at the very beginning, didn't you? Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second solution, which basically is the uh, minus sign. If you put a minus sign here, everything will be negated inside the parentheses. We're going to get that. Now, is anything canceling out? Let's see. These two are going to cancel out, leaving us with negative 2 ln2 divided by 2 ln3. Of course, ln2 doesn't cancel out. I was like, what? Are you serious? I'm over canceling here. The 2s only cancel out, leaving us with a minus sign. And x from here can be written as minus ln2 over ln3. Uh, you can write this in so many different ways. But I'm going to leave it at that because we still need to do the second method real quick, right? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Now we're going to look at some results. For the second method, we're going to write it like this. First of all, I want to write my 4 as 2 squared. I hope you remember the problem. Please take note. And 18 is on the right-hand side. I'm going to write it as 3 squared times 2. If you see that correspondence, uh-oh, x equals 2 right away, right? But let's find the other solution. How do you find the other solution knowing that, right? I'll show you a really cool way to do it. So we're going to work it out a little bit, uh, multiply the 2 by the numerator, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the 3s together and the 2s together. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. This is going to give us 3 to the power x minus 2. And on the right-hand side, this is 2 to the 1. And I'm supposed to subtract uh, this exponent because I'm dividing by that. Makes sense? And when you simplify this, let's go ahead and simplify it separately. That's going to give us uh, x minus 2x plus 2. Don't forget to negate the minus 2. Divide by x, that's going to be negative x plus 2 over x. But also notice that this can be written as the opposite of x minus 2 over x, which is important for our solution. Okay, let's go ahead and put this all together. Now we can write the power of 2 as minus x minus 2 over x. Now at this point, I hope it's clear that x equals 2 is a solution because 3 to the power 0 equals 2 to the power 0, which means 1 equals 1, right? Yay! We got one of the solutions, which is the obvious one, right? But how do you get the other one? Good. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to go ahead and write this as follows. We're going to first write this as 2 to the power of negative 1 over x, consider a 1 here, and then raise it to the power of x minus 2. Now, since we got the x equals 2 out of the way, we can go ahead and raise both sides to the power of 1 over x minus 2, which is not uh, undefined, by the way, because we have to assume x does not equal 2 here. And now we're going to get something nice. 
3 equals 2 to the power negative 1 over x. If you want to raise both sides to the power x, <laughs> be my guest because that looks like a good idea. x is going to cancel out 3 to the x equals 2 to the power negative 1. And then you can definitely log both sides. And that's going to give you let's ln both sides instead. And we're going to get x ln 3 equals negative ln 2, which gives us the exact same solution. Yay. And here's the graph. As you can see, there are two solutions. This is the 2, which is the obvious one, and the other one is the log thingy. And here's the solution on the number line again, one more time. And interesting, level from alpha. Good job, level from alpha. I think we need to give you some credit. Gave us the complex solutions. By the way, this looks like 2 pi, doesn't it? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.